can Fanta make a revival or is it simply a dead project? In today's video, I want to run through some of the major announcements that we've gotten over the past week from the Phantom camp, look at some of the most recent events, and try to determine whether Phantom will feature in next cycle's most prominent coins as it did in the prior cycle. So let's look at what has happened over the last few days because we've had some major announcements and FVM, which was one of Phantom's biggest updates, is finally here right on our doorstep. So Phantom released a tweet saying, Today, Phantom is thrilled to announce the launch of the Phantom Sonic testnet environment. Sonic's three main upgrades include Phantom Virtual Machine, which offers drastically faster smart contract execution compared to the old EVM, which was obviously limited by Geth on the Ethereum network, Common Database Storage, which uses a more efficient data structure to offer up to a 90% storage reduction, lowering costs for validators, optimized Lachesis consensus mechanism, providing an improved transaction pool. And they say with these improvements, Sonic is anticipated to achieve a 2000 plus TPS with ultra short finality. Additionally, Sonic's reduced storage requirements from 11 terabytes down to one terabyte, make it far more affordable and accessible for anyone to launch validators and participate in network consensus. So, Overall, what is Phantom Sonic? Well, Phantom Sonic is the name that covers the new Phantom technology stack, replacing the previous Opera stack. The new tech stack is included in the new Phantom Sonic client that validators and other nodes will run to power the network, which comprises of mainly the Phantom Virtual Machine or FVM, common database storage, and an optimized Lachesis consensus mechanism. In other words, Sonic is the next iteration of the Phantom network with no hard fork required for the upgrade. Existing smart contract services and tools on Phantom Opera should be fully compatible with mainnet Phantom Sonic. Andre posted a tweet here which says 100x in throughput, 100x in block space, minus 99% in storage requirements, minus 99% in hardware requirements, can run on Raspberry Pi, next stop mobile phones, give it a try. And you can see in front of you here the upgrade that it offers versus the old Phantom Opera consensus. And look, on face value, this is a massive, massive upgrade. Clearly, this is something they've been working on for years. I even remember during the 2021 bull run, FVM was something that was spoken about as the next greatest thing for Phantom, but obviously it took slightly longer than expected. It was slated for a Q3 2022 release, didn't happen, get pushed back, got pushed back to the beginning of 2023, and now we're finally seeing into Q4 the eventual release of Sonic on Testnet, and then obviously we're going to see it launching on Mainnet soon as well. So it's been a long time coming for Phantom. It's been delayed and delayed and delayed, but I mean, we can't deny that it does seem, at least on paper, an impressive upgrade. But in practice, what does it look like? Well, now you can actually use the testnet. If you go into publicsonic.phantom.network, this link here, you can add it to your MetaMask and you can play around on the testnet. A testnet means it's not real tokens, so you can add testnet tokens to play around and get a feel for how the network operates. Basically, everyone that's had a chance to use it so far has given it pretty strong reviews. We can see here one user said the results were impressive and showed sub-second execution finality. Excited to see what else the foundation has in store. Apparently, nodes are already tested to run on Raspberry PIs with hints of nodes being supported on mobile phones next. I think that's actually pretty cool because we do need L1s that can have a strong presence in the mobile sphere considering that's what a lot of users use and interact with, right? Like even myself, I do some exchange trading on my mobile phone. I'm pretty much living on my mobile, fo mobile phone. It would be amazing to be able to access Web3 there. Um, Solana tried to do it through Saga, but the more operators that can launch on mobile, uh, the better. And Jack the Oil who's a fan of Phantom said Phantom Sonic is faster in his experience than the MetaMask UI itself. So, so far it's got good reviews. The only thing I will add to this is that in practice, so when you have a lot of transaction volume coming into the network, does it hold up the same as in a testnet environment? I mean, obviously that's when it's really going to be battle tested, right? And that's when any specific exploits or flaws would be exposed. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see until there's an environment where you're getting a lot of transaction volume running through. But on paper, in 
in theory, and all the modeling they've done suggests it is quite a positive upgrade for the network. Andre has come to the forefront a little bit more as well over the past few weeks, being a lot more active on the BD side, doing interviews. Um, we saw with Decrypt, he did an interview where he said, blockchain technology is stuck in the 80s. The internet and tech back then were predominantly used for financial applications simply because financial transactions were the only thing that made economic sense to digitize. In terms of Sonic's ideal clientele, Cronier is hoping to lure in credit card companies and international banks. He was light on names but told Decrypt that he and his team are having multiple conversations with such firms. He said the problem with current blockchain tech is that it's too slow, unscalable, and far too expensive. Institutions don't build on 56k dial-up and 486 processes for the same reason, he said. The tech needs to catch up and we're confident Sonic is a step towards developing what institutions need when leveraging the blockchain. So all this is super positive. We see the price also is responding well, pivoting off what looks to be a double bottom on the macro weekly time frame, starting to show signs that it does want to break above this support band as well and push further up towards its next resistance at 41 cents. So we're starting to see it wake up a little bit, but overall, let's go back to reality for a second. Phantom has been very severely impacted by the multi-chain exploit and also the sentiment towards the chain because it was one of the most prominent chains in the bull run. It had a crazy amount of TVL. There was a lot of Ponzonomics on the chain. A lot of new applications were launching, farming TVL with crazy high APRs. We know Andre Kronje launched his Solidly project, which he later on ended up leaving, but he created and garnered a bunch of hype and it was just mania. It was absolutely crazy and phantom was one of the networks that grew the fastest in terms of tvl but you know what comes up must come down and when it ended up correcting it also corrected a lot harder than other l1s and not just a lot harder it corrected almost the hardest out of any l1 um, and as a user of phantom this was a difficult thing to see but i mean it's just the reality of crypto right when sentiment starts to kick in and people don't feel comfortable on a chain anymore or don't have a reason to be on that chain anymore which i think is more applicable in phantom's case they're simply going to withdraw their funds and this was happening quickly but phantom still found a flaw around the 800 mil to one bill region but what really started to affect them after that initial correction was the multi-chain exploit they were one of their biggest service providers for bridging and it basically meant that any asset that you had that were bridged via multi-chain, which could have been Ethereum or stable coins, um, was essentially worthless, right? So people had hundreds of millions of dollars worth of these assets on the chain that were worthless. Like I have a good friend that had like 10,000 Ethereum. It was valued at like $100 because multi-chain got exploited. And essentially Andre came out and said, uh, that multi-chain was a big blow. He said, we had lots of assurances from the team around their server decentralization, access and geolocation distribution. Um, don't trust, verify, saying this to myself. So it took them by surprise and I won't go into the nitty gritty too much because I did a video back at the time around what happened with the multi-chain exploit, but essentially the keys were exploited and someone got access to the server keys and then we saw the founder actually get arrested so the team couldn't access the keys to rectify it the protocol and uh there was a massive hack and to this day we still don't have a full recovery of the funds during the exploit despite as andre says phantom's best efforts to help with the recovery and assistance of these funds so it was a complete mess if you want to read um you can look up multi-chain uh on twitter and then you can get all the details as to what happened but it was a pretty crazy event and because phantom was so closely tied in with multi-chain and as andre said they had assurances which ended up not being too assured um phantom ended up taking a massive hit bigger than any chain because they had the most exposure because usdc one of the major stable coins on the network was bridged via multi-chain and it didn't get any easier for phantom after the multi-chain exploit because soon after the foundation got exploited uh, for their own crypto with one of the foundation employees losing seven million dollars worth of crypto in his own exploit so all of this went to damage the sentiment around the phantom network and result in a lot of tvl flowing out and a lot of activity being lost for the network but there's good news. It's not just a sad story. The good news is Sonic, I think, is a major step in the right direction for Phantom. And look, we do need to see whether developers will be incentivized um, to develop here still. We, we still need to see whether it constitutes enough of a monumental upgrade to incentivize new dApps to build there and users to come back to Phantom. But um, if we know anything, it's that Andre is an amazing developer. Uh, and I think the team's worked super hard on shipping this product 
and it only spells, I think, a turning of the tide for Phantom as an ecosystem. Now, as an ecosystem, it might be an amazing thing, but what does it mean in terms of price? Well, Phantom, as we can see, is pivoting off this low. It does look like it's setting in a double bottom at the 18 to 19 cent zone. You can see here it's now pushing up into resistance at 25 cents. After this level, there's not really much resistance for Phantom until 42 cents, and then your next major level is the $1 region, as we can see marked out here. Um, it was major support twice back in March 2022. However, it eventually broke down, Phantom came down, tested 18 cents, has kind of hovered around this region. During the FVM hype earlier in the year, Phantom actually pumped aggressively, and now it's come back down. So what's the takeaway from that? Well, essentially, in my opinion, Phantom, similar to Rune, in a bull market or in a positive market environment is actually often one of the strongest performers. So I certainly wouldn't be fading Phantom in terms of its ability to perform really strongly price-wise when the market comes back. It's shown this time and time again that it can pump super, super hard, similar to Rune, um, and it has also shown it can dump super hard in the wrong environment. So Phantom for me still becomes a coin that if you're a trader, is probably an amazing trade when it breaks key resistance levels, um, assuming the market is exhibiting positive price momentum because of how aggressively it pumps. And for me, it's not a terrible DCA uh, as part of a well-diversified portfolio. I mean, even if you want to speculatively bet on Sonic and FVM succeeding or Andre, then I think you could take a small position here, DCA spot position over time, have it as part of your portfolio as one of your L1 bets and just see what happens, accepting that it could go to zero, but also accepting there could be massive upside if it succeeds. That's really how I'm treating Phantom at the moment. Um, I wouldn't position myself more than one to 5% of my portfolio value. For me personally, I might sit closer to one to 2%, um, a small amount just in case we do have a revival. And of course, on these crazy aggressive pumps, that's where you would profit take. And I'm also looking into the trading side of things on Phantom as well, considering that it does pump, you know, quite aggressively when the market does heat up. And if you do want to kind of spot when that pump is starting to happen, banter bubbles is one thing I've been looking at. You can see he actually rune, as I just discussed, pump super hard when the market's green. He's one of the best performers over the last week. Pepe as well, similar thing. Phantom as well. Um, similar thing with the current announcement. So at least it shows the market's propensity to bid on Phantom in the face of more positive news for the network. That's a good thing. If they announced Sonic and the price didn't move at all, that would be extremely worrying. And I mean, you could basically call it dead, but the fact it did respond shows there's a bit of life. And th for that reason, I'm, I'm certainly not ignoring it. And if you do want to win half a Bitcoin, by the way, and you're using banter bubbles, all you need to do is click on the top right hand corner, enter your price prediction for Bitcoin on the 1st of January 2024 on Coinbase, enter your exchange UID with the corresponding exchange that you select by the BitGet. Links in the description below in case you don't have one. If you have one, you can make your prediction and win half a Bitcoin if you're the closest to the price prediction on January 1st. You can see people are pretty bullish. Lots of green price predictions into January 1st. I hope they're right, um, but the proof will be in the pudding come January 1st, but you can speculate and put your own prediction in using the description below. Another thing that I'm doing to trade coins like Phantom is I'm looking at the on chain analytics because something I think that's really important, especially for coins that live on their own chain. Of course, Phantom is a network on KyberSwap, is monitoring the on chain flow. So that's where wallets are depositing into centralized exchanges back into the DEXs that you can also monitor on KyberSwap and also the on chain trading activity and trading volume. Because what KyberSwap does is it aggregates these metrics to give you a Kyber score, which shows you whether a coin is exhibiting bullish or bearish momentum. And for something like Phantom, it's going to be really important to see when that does start to tick up from bearish into bullish momentum. If that lines up with the technicals, then I think you have more confluence for strong trades, as I said, when you do get that positive price response. So there's a link in the description below to Kyber AI if you want to sign up and get early access. Banter subscribers will get an expedited sign up process versus the general public if you do want to use it. And yeah, that's something I'll also be employing for a coin like Phantom, which lives on chain. I think it's much easier to use Kyber AI when a coin has a lot of trading volume on chain. Whereas something like Bitcoin, like only wrapped Bitcoin is representative on chain, probably not gonna give you as close of a metric to track as like Phantom, which a lot of the trading does actually happen on its native network, obviously, because that's where it lives. It's, a, it's an ERC-20 token. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the description below. Are you betting on Phantom for next cycle? I don't blame you if you aren't, but if you are, let me know the reasons why. And yeah, just be very interested to hear what is your feeling now that we're in this situation where pretty much all the hype has been taken out, all the TVLs have been taken out, all the price has been taken out, and we're pretty much left with the tech. Uh, and, and I think Sonic does look pretty strong. So let me know in the comments below what you think, um, and I will see you in the next video next week. Hope you have a lovely day. Peace out.